We are here with uh, Jason Eck, the newly named offensive coordinator here at South Dakota State University. Uh, he led us in the hog barn today. Uh, we're here for the team football camp, so he's going to give us 10 minutes of his time. And thanks for coming on the show, hey, Coach. I appreciate it, I appreciate it Brian. I'm honored to be here with you guys again. Now, Coach, to get started here, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about how you build your offensive line um, when, when you start as an online background, and that's really your forte. How are you building your line going into every season? Well, I, I think a lot of it uh, starts with solidifying the middle at center. You know, again, I want to have a, a smart guy who understands what we're doing conceptually at center, can you know, communicate, get, get the two sides on the same page with things. I think depending on the skill set, we can do different things. I know we talked in the past when we have an athletic center, like we get him in space and pull him. And then I think you got to be strong on the edge. I think you got to be very good at tackle, uh, both with uh, communication of different looks you see over the edge with you know, how people are covering down, do they have a uh, potential blitz look or are they showing more of a single high look where we're not capped with the guy over the slot receiver is not a threat to blitz. Understanding those things and then also just having the athleticism to protect on the edge if you're going to drop back and pass it all, I think is critical. And again, I say that not to discredit guards, but if, you know, if, I, was, you know, if I had some swing guys who I thought were very good players uh, and I was trying to fit them in, I'd probably want to fit those guys in center tackle first and if I was working in a college freshman or if I was working in a high school sophomore first time on varsity, I'd probably rather have my guard where I could get help on both sides with communication from the center and the tackle. When you talk about fronts, Coach, that really where you got to start at, um, what fronts are you going to introduce to your guys day one? This is what we're going to see a lot of the time. This is how teams are going to play these formations. Where do you start at with your own line? Well, I you know, one thing I've learned over my time as a coach is, you know, I think when I was a young coach, you know, the first day I'd have the young alignment in there and I would teach them how to block every front mm -hmm. and everything we'd see all year. And I think what that led to sometimes is guys playing slow. So our, our defense is an over defense. You know, we see a lot of three of the tight ends. So, you know, really I focus to start out with that. How are we going to block these base plays against the over defenses? Obviously, as we evolve through, uh, you know, fall camp, we need to get into the OP three-man fronts. Uh, we see a little bit of under. we got to get into the variations, the bare fronts you might see. But, uh, you know, for us, a lot of it's based on our defense. You know, our, our starting point is the over, and there's a lot of, you know, four down over teams in our league uh, that we have to be ready for as well. Four. So on, we'll, we'll go on the board. So for anybody who, who is unsure what Coach is talking about, he'll draw some things on the board here for us um, and really go over what he's talking about when we're talking an oaky front, an over front, a bare front, and how they're really going to attack it um, at the line of scrimmage to start, and then we'll get, as we get outside the hashes. Our, our, our defense gives us a lot of base over. They play their Sam and their Will fairly wide. A lot of quarter base systems where these, these guys are quick to trigger inside. Uh, so this is a, a front that we're dealing with uh, quite a bit to start. And then again, you get to some of the teams that are multiple in our conference, the, Seven, where they're going to go back and forth and give you some you know, field under fronts. You know, this is the wide side of the field over here. You know, more of a stand up two point stance rush guy. And then be versatile to be able to stem to that, that open three down front. And they're going to play that zero. They're going to play those four eyes and those four techniques. A lot of the same fronts we're seeing. And that's, you know, again, I think you always have to spend some time working on those fronts that you don't see from your defense because I think there's definitely a nature when you block the most in spring ball for us, when you block the most in fall camp. Probably the best against that just because you get the most reps against it. When you go back to your base rules, so if you're in, you know, a, a pro set, a, a one tight end, a one back, 11 personnel, or if you're in a 21 personnel, and you guys are going to run power. You guys are going to run power football a lot. How are you going to adjust how you're blocking power to how everybody's going to line up against you constantly as it evolves? Yeah, you know, I think you always want to start with this. you got to start simple so we can play fast. And again, our, our starting point, we talk like about our power play is we're going to block the inside gap. 
Okay, we're going to block the inside gap. And that, that's a win and doubt rule. If you ever get a confusing look or the defense is stepping around, if we ever go tempo when a defense is not set, I'm blocking our inside gap. For there, you know, we want to have you know, more of a, an, an evolution or build upon you know, that base knowledge of the base rule with more intricacies as you go over time, such as you know, the right guard, right, no one in your play side, your, your inside gap. Okay, well, that could allow us to take what we call pop footwork, step with your inside foot, get your eyes to the gap, and now be vertical and pick through this down guy so we can get a strong double team uh, you know, up to the backers to the next level. But we want to keep it really simple so kids are flying off the ball, playing fast. That way we feel you can evaluate guys better too. You can see what a guy is capable of as a blocker and just as how he moves, how he can play. And then once we figure out what guys are just capable of, Physically, we keep bringing them along mentally and get them caught up, caught up to the next, uh, you know, the next intricacies they need to know. The, the more you tempo, do you find that you limit what a defense is going to play from a front standpoint? So you know you're, they're going to try to get lined up and get back on the ball as you're tempoing them. Are you going to limit how they're going to line up? I, I think I'll, I'll be honest. I think a lot of what we do on offense is to try to limit what a defense does. Okay, whether it's tempo, whether it's trade shifts and motions. You know, whether it's you know, jet motions, whether it's uh, free release in the back, whether it's breaking the set, you know, being in a, you know, a 21 personnel or a 12 personnel formation, or a personnel group with a given them more of a spread, 10 or 11 personnel set. To me, all those things are built in to try to make you tougher to defend and try to put stress on the defense so that hopefully, you know, there's somebody in that staff room when they're trying out this blitz. Uh, one of the guys raises their hand. Well, what if they do this that they did against these guys? And they say, oh, you're, you're right. Let's throw that out. Uh-huh. That's just really our hope. Now, as, as you evolve into game plan and you go week to week, when you're building your call sheet and you're building, you know, you have your core run packages that you're going to run and your passing concepts with your new pass game coordinator uh, that you guys have here, do you have a set number of, well, we really want to get uh, Kay Johnson the ball t- you know, 10 times in a game? Or, or do you look at it from a concept standpoint? Well, we're going to run these concepts, and and it should get that way more often than not. Are you are you putting guys' names on your call sheet saying these are dialed up for him specifically, and he needs uh, to get the football? I, I really believe we get it. Too. Okay, we want to have ways that, that we're going to get guys the ball. Now we can't you know force it. So uh, you know, obviously, if we're uh, you know expecting uh, quarters and we're we're trying to throw a hitch because we think we're going to get a soft corner, now they're playing cover two with the hard corner. We can't be forced and try to. Uh, not fit it through there, but I, but I really believe as we game plan, we need to be personnel based, both with blocking schemes we're using up front and how we're going to use our personnel to attack our best matchups. Because, uh, you know, obviously, you can play a team like Minnesota uh, in our first game, you know, across the board, we're not going to just have, uh, you know, fortuitous matchups all across the board, like, you know, maybe uh, you do when you play a, a smaller school or a non scholarship school, but how can we isolate? You know, our best player or one of their worst players to try to give us a, a great matchup. You know, let's talk the, you know, kind of the Oki front in the, in the upper right-hand corner there. If you're going to block power against that, you know, we, we see that on occasion at our level, at the high school level, but not a lot of teams do that. What are some of the adjustments you use to block power against those type of fronts? Well, one of the big things we're always looking for when we're going to block a team with a zero nose is one of two ways we're going to handle it. Are we going to make a down call and bring the guard down in that zero nose or are we going to base it with the center and have him take it? And one of the things that we like to do with our power play is run it out of a, a pistol set with our quarterback opening and putting his butt to the hole to help hold the backside in. And that allows us to feel like this guy's really getting down in there, we can get a good double that we would you know, double here, going back, I'd be able to base it, be able to come cut off. A lot of times, actually, physically cut, rip the backside arm, and get him cut. All right. So that now, as we work our uh, work our scheme, we can get up, maybe even get up to a safety who's coming down, who's man on the tight end, as well as getting kicked out. So we're always looking, how are we handling this? And we like open it here where we're butt to the hole, butt to where the puller is, because we feel like we can hold that guy. Now, other times, if we get a team where we think that's just not really necessary, or you know, a team that's like, a, you know, likes to bring a lot of like weak safety down where they're not crazy about, you know, pulling it because, you know, they have, you know, 
Cal Poly did this to us a couple of years ago. And this guy's chasing him. They just have a guy sitting there you know, trying to get your quarterback to pull it and run out to him. Uh, that might be a time where we are going to make a down call. Go down, post and go back, seal and peel to get to that backer. Now with our double team at the point of attack, I think it's important for the important for the, the tackle to really be aggressive and vertical. Get his head inside, take away the inside, and then press vertical. Not let it get washed sideways. And we talked a lot about our tight end attacking the hip. You want him really working through that hip. And if that four technique is trying to two gap or play our tackle, tackle laterally, we got to get down there on that hip and define him. Knock that defensive end down into the gap so we can get our tight end up to that backside back. Awesome, Coach. I know for Brian and I both, we appreciate you taking a few minutes and going over some of these great things with us um, and letting us in the hog barn today, this evening. Um, we wish you guys the best of luck this fall as you guys prepare for another good playoff run. Let me give you one more thing, another, one more four-eye play. And this is a good four-eye play. I know you guys have those bare fronts. Let's go over here. Uh, good, good little way to attack a four-eye team because those four-eyes can be tough to, tough to move. Okay, we'll get an 11 personnel that like to spread the field out a little bit when we get in those sets. And we'll say we have a two I team that's playing the double four eyes against us. We like this a lot, especially when we had an athletic uh, athletic center. Okay, but bring an emotion guy over. They may bump the backer slightly bringing him to protect the edge against that sand fire if the team's ever trying to roll, you know, roll to a cover three. That's the receiver bypass, go dig out. Now using more of that pin and pull scheme where we're blocking down. This we have variance depending on who we have. Again, when we had an athletic center, we like to, to pin and pull, uh, and pull the backside guard and the center around all right, for the two inside backers. And then on the backside, one of two things we could do depending on who the biggest threat was. Sometimes blocking out on him and having the, the quarterback lead that player. Other times we can just you know, keep it truly run off the widest and the tackle uh, pulling it out. But that's been a, a very good go-to player for us over the years against our three down, four eye teams to try to get the ball on the edge against them. So I want to give that one, one of those good little nuggets there. Thank you. We appreciate it, Coach. And you're exactly right. We see a ton of four eye stuff at our level, especially in Southern Minnesota. Um, again, Coach, I can't say thank you enough for taking taking some time and doing this with us today. We truly appreciate it. It's a lot of great stuff, and, and we'll be back next summer to pick your brain again. I appreciate it, fellas.